Good evening, good evening, good evening, and welcome back to another episode of the Band of Barbers podcast, the barber's favorite podcast for personal development and fundamental growth tips. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. My name is Devon Evans. As always, we appreciate you listening. Tonight is episode number 73. Have you ever wondered why some barbers are more skilled when it comes to others, but they're not busy? Have you ever wondered why some barbers are less skilled than others, but they are busy? It's a very, very simple thought process that you have to understand. In the barbering industry, in the barbering world, there are few within your city, community, or state that will make it to the barbering Mount Rushmore, I'll call it. And, you know, people try to understand, and, 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 you know, if you talk to a lot, if you talk to people, and mainly the clients, um, if they don't see you for a long time, the first question they will ask you is if you are still cutting hair, still a barber, if you're still doing things like that. What does that mean? Well, in short, that means that that client has seen barbers come and go. Come and go, right? Because most people believe that the barbering industry is about freedom and working for yourself, and your choices, and everything like that. Listen, on average, a barber has anywhere between 200 to maybe 300 clients on on a regular basis throughout a year, right? And if you've heard me say this before, you know what I'm about to say. If you haven't, be prepared. Most people think when they quit their jobs or they decide to become a barber, they're firing their boss. And while that statement is true, they don't understand that they're hiring 200 to 300 bosses. We call, you may call them clients or we call them clients, but they are our bosses. They are in control of our pay. This is what I mean by that. That doesn't mean that you can't market. That doesn't mean that you can't do. Sorry. Sorry, guys. It doesn't mean that you can't market. That doesn't mean that you can't do things of, of that nature. What I'm saying is, is that your rotation and and, and things of that nature, it's controlled by the client, right? You can, a client can hire and fire whatever barber that they want to, and a barber can hire and fire whatever client that they want to. As a barber, you need to keep that in mind. Right. So to answer your 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 first question. Or the first question that I asked, the reason that barbers who are highly skilled. Are not uh, sometimes are not very busy is because they spent so much time learning and focusing on the skills that they they 
did not pay attention to the soft skills, to the customer service, to the conversation, to the they can give an amazing haircut, but they have zero their their personality. They have the personality of a brick, right? And, and, and why do I say personality of a brick? Because they're they're abrupt, they're dangerous, they're volatile. They 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 have the personality of a brick. And 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 when I say that they're dangerous, it doesn't mean that they're like, oh, they're a criminal. No, they're they're just liable to say any and everything that they possibly could say, right? They say the first thing that comes to their mind, don't care who's there, who's in the room, everything like that. Now, that works in a, maybe a, 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 a salon suite or barber suite. It works in a suite, right? It can work in a one chair shop maybe right maybe it doesn't work in bigger shops when you have multiple barbers with multiple different clientele uh different age like it doesn't work And some barbers are okay with that. Some barbers are going to say, look, I am who I am. And I get it, right? I will tell people I am who I am. Now, I am who I am, but I'm always evolving. I'm always growing. I'm always changing. I'm always looking for better ways to do things. I just say, I'm looking for more efficient, better ways to do things. Okay, now, like I said, the, the the talented barber, and 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 here's where sometimes young barbers get blocked in the shop. Sometimes young barbers will get blocked in thinking I have got to to be just like the technically skilled barber, right? He's always on me because, you know, I did this wrong, I did this wrong, I did this wrong, so on and so forth. And am I saying that that technically skilled barber is wrong? Absolutely not. Because you should grow and desire to be more technically skilled in what you do. Absolutely. Not a question. Okay? You should grow. Here's where it gets tricky. You not only should grow in those technical things, but you need to grow in those soft skills. See, that 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 talented barber doesn't have those soft skills, no customer service, doesn't know how to talk to people. Very inconsistent, doesn't show up to work all the time, things of that nature. <clears throat> and 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 what I will say about that is, you know, a lot of times, though, like those technical technically skilled barbers will hold themselves back. And I don't necessarily really know why, but they will hold themselves back from flourishing and and gaining a a large clientele base. Now, I, I I'm this is all speculation. What I'm about to say, I believe that those very technical skilled barbers hand-pick and hand-select their clientele. And what does that mean? They do what they're good at, right? And so you may be the new barber trying to trying to survive, trying to figure it out, trying to do all those things. So 
you can't afford to turn away clients. And to be honest, most of the time that other barber can't afford it either. But he is going to he or she is going to present to you that they are comfortable in what they're doing. And the truth is, they're not. It's just that that's my speculation. They're not comfortable, but they'd rather be in that uncomfort than to get uncomfortable and learn new things because they picked up certain skills so fast and they got so many, they, they, they got enough clients that, that, that really, um, how do I say this? They got enough clients that can support their current skill set. And so because you see them cut those clients on those, you know, they're, they're, they're highly, their their clients whose 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 hair they've learned you see them cut them on a regular basis they look like stars right they look like absolute stars but if you pay attention long enough if those barbers just maybe happen to take a walk in right or they happen to get uh refer you know get somebody referred to them from another um barber that they may not be you know a hundred percent comfortable with or, or, or from another client sorry not a barber they they get a client refers to them from uh, um from another client and they're like oh it's so and so so I'll do it watch they may struggle. It may not be their supreme haircuts, their movie star haircuts that they put out. Right? Sometimes those talented barbers are are talented in what they display and they're unwilling to learn and grow in new things because, like I said, they've elevated so high in, in, in one set of skills and their other set of skills is so low, they're not willing to learn this because if they go back down to where their lower set of skills are, they're afraid that they're going to get exposed and lose clientele because they're going to give bad haircuts. And if you're that talented barber who who is is afraid, just understand something. You're only going to like you have to fail forward. Your your talent, your high skills that you have at one time were not that great. They were not. They were not that great. Okay, it's just just the reality. So. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just letting you know. So you can get better if you're intentional about it. You can grow if you're intentional about it. Right? You can grow that skill set that you need. You can also grow your, um, You can also grow in those other skills that you're missing. Hey, being rude because you are a barber in a barbershop, not okay. Not not okay. Am I saying completely change who you are? No. But if you're in a barbershop, typically you're an adult. You might be a young, a young young teenager, but you know right from wrong. You know acceptable in public and unacceptable in public. You do. You absolutely do. So let's let's work let's work on those things. Right? <clears throat> And 
let, 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 let's work on those things. Let's develop those things. Let's grow. Let's make let's make improvements on what we on what we are doing. All right. Let's let's just do that. Let's let's be let's be the 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 best. Not just the best in one thing. Right? Like if you look at for my for my sports guys, right? You can talk LeBron, you can talk Jordan, you can talk Larry Bird, you can talk Magic Johnson, you can talk any of them. For my sports guys, like you have to really you, you understand, right? Those names I listed off are 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 some people's Mount Rushmores as far as barbers. There there's some they are uh they are highly looked upon, right? And many conversations they're discussed as as some of them are, are, are discussed as goats. You know, some of them are discussed as just great players, all of those sorts of, sorts of things. But you, if you've, if you've watched the sports, you've watched anything about them, like, they are discussed as great players, but, you know, what's the whole point of the basketball game? To put the basketball in the hoop. They didn't always do that, and they're still discussed as great players. Some of the some of them, their defensive game was stronger than others. They're still great players. They averaged they averaged out to be great because they had certain strengths and they worked on their weaknesses. They developed them all, they they developed them all together. Did they focus on being defensive player of the year, and that's it? No. They focused on having a well-rounded game, an asset. They were leaders. Some may consider some of those leaders to be toxic. Some They were leaders. They held people accountable. They got results. They did what they did, and people cannot argue with that. So if you're you you flourished in one area, let's say, uh, and, and let's just say that you come you come from the 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 curly kinky wavy community, and and you never cut straight or loose curled hair. If you go into another environment where there's straight and loose curled hair, it's great that you are excellent in the curly kinky wavy community. But you're going to have to learn how to cut this straight and loose curl hair. You're going to have to learn how to cut that stuff. Because if you don't, you're not going to eat. And we make that clear. If you don't, if you don't, you are not going to eat. And then you're going to be one of those barbers going out there. You can give it up. Oh, well, you know, my clientele was slow, so I had to get a job. And, you know, I still kind of do it. Don't be that guy. Don't be that guy. Right? And, 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 no, do not. Do not be that guy. So that's why, and I spent a lot of time on this, but I, I but I need you, need you guys to understand if you're, you're, you're new into the game and you're watching and understand it. Sometimes those technical technically skilled barbers are not all, are not always busy. But now I'm going to explain to you why you can be busy as a less technically skilled barber. A less technically skilled barber right and, and there there there's a a, a grading there's, there, we're all familiar with grading skills, right? I like to say that a barber does not need to be excellent in everything. You can go into a shop, and if you spend long enough there watching barbers and watching the multiple barbers cut the, cut hair, each barber has a different specialty, 
right? There is one thing typically that each barber does well. All right? It is. It's, it's typically one thing that each barber does well. But in order, like, yes, you need to have those those stellar things, just like we were talking about with the, I won't say suppose it, but we were talking about the technically skilled barbers. There are certain things that you're going to be better at than others, but you should be proficient at everything. And And what do I, my definition of proficient behind behind the chair is being able to provide the service that is requested. Now, I'm not talking about necessarily like chemical services and things like that, right? Those are another, I won't say it's another level of barbering, but it's typically something in barbering that is not done very often. Still think you should be proficient, still believe that you should do those things, but if that is one of your weaker skills i'm not here to 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 judge you on that what i'm saying is 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 that you should be proficient in utilizing shears shear over comb clippers clipper over comb razors even a straight razor, and even um, feather razors. You should be proficient in using those. Understanding how they work, how they can be applied to a haircut, how they can be applied to a style. Like, understanding those things. You should be proficient. In those things. Now. Again. The proficiency is understanding how they work. And understanding how to. How to. How how to utilize the tools. The proper way to utilize the tools. Okay. Over time. You're going to see. And find places where you're like. Oh. I can do this. With this, I can do this with like over time, you're going to see those things. Okay, so in the new barber world, you, you, you need to, you, you know, new barbers, you need to be proficient. Now, how do you become proficient? If you've gone to school, right, you should have gotten basic, you should, you should have gotten a basic understanding of how tools operate and work depending on how what type of teacher you had if you really paid attention in class all of the all of those types of things like follow me here now when you get out into the in into the shop again you don't really you don't i'm gonna say don't really you don't have if this is the only thing that you're doing which it should be you don't have an option to turn away clients. You should not be turning away clients. And if you do say, I cannot provide this service until you figure, like from the moment that you say, I can not provide this service, you need to go and figure out how that service is done. How is the service done? Are we clear? Like, you need to figure those things out. Right? That's that's without a doubt. Figure it out. And 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 so you 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 again, you just need to you need to understand that. You need to check it out. Like you need to figure it out. That is how, like, not turning away clients it is how you can stay, you can stay, you, you can stay busy. But if your confidence is shot and that you can't provide the service, then you need to work 
on your education as far as becoming proficient. Asking other barbers who you see excelling in what you're struggling in. Watching the other barbers, asking questions, watching YouTube videos, learning the fundamentals and the language of how these things work together. You understand? Like you, you have to do those things. So you can be busy based on the fact that you just don't turn clients away. Also, that you show up on time, right? If you're in a shop and, and it's booth rent and they say, oh, well, you can kind of come and go as you please. First of all, that's the biggest lie. Come and go as you please. You're not going to make no money. You're not. But if you're there from open to close and you and and, and you know, I don't know what your schedule is outside of, outside of there, but it wouldn't hurt sometimes to, you know, take that last minute walk in or something like that. Like, open to close consistently. You're there. When you get off, you're handing out cards, you're making videos, you're doing all. You can be busy. Also... In making sure that you operate in those soft skills. Listen, I just had a conversation about this today. For some reason, I am terrible with names. Remembering names, I am terrible. But I can remember faces and I can remember conversations and important details about previous conversations that we've had. And so be, because I, I don't I, I don't do well with names, everybody is sir to me. Right? The old, older guys, yes, sir. Come on, sir. Let, you know, let, let, let's have a seat. Yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. The, it's just how I communicate. And it just it is what it is. I'm not being rude. I'm not being disrespectful. Like, I'm, yes, sir. No, sir. What can I do for you, sir? What, what? And, and that right there takes it to a whole nother level. You understand? And like, it takes it to a whole nother level. And people want to people want to be respected. Mistakes I've seen seen some people make, right? Client comes in and let's say their shop price or the, you know the haircut price is twenty dollars. They some barbers will treat that client like twenty dollars. Not a human being, not a person with emotions or feelings, red blood flowing through their body, anything like that. They will treat them like twenty freaking dollars. Am I saying? Am I saying be your client's best friend? Absolutely not. That is not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is have conversations. And treat clients with respect. By saying have a long, drawn out, theoretical conversation. If you're not that type of person, no. Let the client guide the conversation, right? If anybody's ever watched the Vic Blends videos, I, I, I just told a barber this this recent recently that I'm that, that, I, that I'm working with. I said you need to work on your soft skills, work on your conversation, work on those things. So you need to work on that conversation. I said, if you watch the Vic Blends videos, you need to remember there are, in, in his videos where he does the, the, the public cutting and the free cuts and everything like that, I said, he, he asked three questions. What is your name? Where are you from? And what do you do? Ask every single client that gets in your chair that. 
right? I told him this. Did you ask the adult? You ask the adults that, and if they're kids, uh, what is your name? Where are you? Uh, where do you go to school? And do you play any sports? Boom. Now you told the client, hey, look, I actually care about you. Somewhat, at least. It's not you don't it's not like an over it, but I'm not just here to get money. I'm not just here like my belief, and I stand on it. Money is a natural consequence. Natural consequence. When a client comes into the shop to get a haircut, walk-in or appointment, they know that they are not getting this service for free. And you know that I am here in a business and I am not providing this service for free. But I am providing a service. I am. I'm providing a service to my client. They are paying for a service. Therefore, please, please give them the best service that you can possibly give them. Remember, like I said before, if you're coming from from the working world, you fired a boss to gain to gain 200 bosses. And if you're going to have 200 bosses, you know, giving them the best of your your ability means that when you leave from where you are, when you leave from when you leave from the situation and you leave from those clients, you need to be spending time outside of uh, outside of there doing the work. Doing the work, figuring it out, figuring out what's going on, testing, learning, learning, testing, figuring all of those things out. That's how you, as a, a as a less skilled barber, can be a busy barber. Care about the people, and the money will come. Care about the money, and the people will run. I can't put it any simpler than that. If you care about the people, the money will come. But if you just care about the money, the people will run. That's all there is to it. That is all there is to it. Okay, so guys, you can be busy as a, as a less skilled barber, but you need even at the as at less as a less skilled barber, you still need to be seeking out opportunities to grow. People, you you don't necessarily understand while people really really care. Well, well, I won't say all people. While some people really care about the way that they look, most people get ha- get haircuts like monthly or biweekly what bi- like monthly or biweekly medicine, right? Every two weeks, I gotta go get my haircut, and, and you know, I heard somebody say this the other day: like a haircut is male makeup, right? And so they're coming in to get their their fix for the next couple of weeks. Okay? So if you can give them the best of your ability or you can just give them a trash haircut, take $20 and never see that client again. You're not going to build anything like that or it's going to be few and far between, but you're 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 not you're not going to build like that. It's it's just it's just not it's not gonna work, and 
And just just trust trust and believe. Trust and believe. Right? You'll get there. Don't rush it. Don't don't jump all jump all out. Don't rush. You will get there. It will come in time. Just take your time. Figure it out. Learn. And the, 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 some of the easiest things that you can do is learn to be, learn those soft skills, be respectful, do the, do those types of things. So some of the easiest things that you can do, those take a lot less effort in learning than 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 learning those technical skills. So you can improve those things much quicker than you can anything else. So guys, uh, listen. We we we've di- we've discussed how how you can you can win, you can win, and and for my my season guys, if you took this personally, I'm sorry, but I'm I'm just telling you it is what it is. But I appreciate you guys. I thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Band of Barbers podcast, where we challenge you on personal development, and growth in your fundamentals. Thank you again for tuning in. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Have a good night.